It was nearly 70 years ago when 90 young men from northern Box Elder County joined the Garland National Guard. The entire group was inducted into the Army on March 3, 1941 as part of the 222nd Field Artillery Headquarters Battery, 40th Division. Fresh off the farm and ignorant about what lay ahead, they stood proudly in their uniforms on the steps of the Garland Tabernacle before heading to San Luis Obispo, California for what was to be 12 months of basic training. Those 12 months turned into nearly five years. It was five long years away from the homes they knew and the families they loved. Five tough, hard years that battered spirits, deepened resolve, and solidified friendships. Though most of those young soldiers are gone now, they have left behind it written memories of those years away from home. What follows is a small sampling. I joined the National Guard. Uh, they had, they let me know that my name had come up, but they wanted to fill their quota. The National Guard was being drafted, and so I went with them. Shirley Larson and I met one day on Main Street in Garland, and we were talking about world events and how they would affect us as local young men. At that meeting, we made the decision that would affect our lives for the next five years. After some soul searching, we decided against being drafted. Joining the local National Guard was the best. I felt that by doing so, we would be with men who we had grown up with and with whom we had gone to school. Art Astle. It was the day before Christmas, 1944, on Leyte Island. Somebody had a radio playing and Bing Crosby was singing, I'll be home for Christmas. It sounded good. Eldon Munns. It was March 1941. We boarded the train in Brigham City. It took three days to arrive in San Luis Obispo, California. It was a new camp of tents, rain, mud, and deck boards. Ray Firth. Sunny California turned out to be a bog hole of black gumbo mud with wooden sidewalks floating down the battery streets. Don Frisbee. Basic trained for two, two months in the Garland uh, Armory, and then we went to uh, San Luis Obispo, and we're, we were there for until December. We were all planning on coming home for Christmas holidays. Some of in December 1941, I had put in for leave to come home for Christmas, but my plans were changed by the bombing of Pearl Harbor. Marvin Stenquist. Well, I was to church. I'd been to church that day, and, and I, uh, we had a chapel right next to us, and I just went across the street to it, and when I came back, they told us that Pearl Harbor was bombed, so we got all ready that Sunday, and we left the next morning for Escondido, California, as guards along the beach. We then uh, stayed in Escondido until uh, it, in March, and we, then we moved up to Port Louis, Washington, and we were up there until September. We trained out in Yakima and so forth. And then we, uh, the first of September, we moved down to uh, was Camp Stoneman. And then and we were there for a couple of weeks and got new recruits and we then sailed for uh, Maui on, uh, on the USS Republic, which was an old troop ship that they had uh, confiscated from the Germans during World War I. And uh, we sailed to uh, Hawaii and we got on a steamer and went to uh, Maui. We were on Maui from September of 42 until uh, January of 44, and then we went back to Oahu, and we were there until June, and we set sail for Saipan. We stopped in Eniwetok. We was in the atoll there, 
and uh, and we were bombed. But so that was our first uh, campaign. We have six doors on our our Asiatic ribbon, six campaigns that. And then we sailed to Saipan, and when that island was secured, we went over to Tinian, and when that island was secured, we sat there until, and we set sail and landed on uh, Leyte, September, uh, December of the 6th, 1944. That island was secured. We uh, were used as stevedores for the island of, and they had to unload a, a, a whole bunch of uh, LSTs, and we were on those until we went to Mindoro and unloaded them and came back to Leyte. There was the quagmire, Leyte. Most of us felt that we should have given Leyte back to the Japanese, then forced them to live there. One thing, you never had to wash your socks. They were always wet. Our last great adventure was a D-Day landing on Okinawa, April 1, 1945. We would have preferred to spend Easter Sunday most anywhere else. Once again, we are talking rain and mud. With that mud built up on our shoes, we were all seven feet tall. Don Ellsworth. Well, we were... We went up uh, Okinawa, and that was the worst one because we were shelled two or three different times. But uh, but on Saipan, when we landed there, we landed up D plus one, and they only had a 300-yard uh, beachhead. So we got shelled from the island of Tinian till the Navy knocked the gun out. Had a big bonsai attack before the island was secured. We're on Okinawa, we landed there on D plus one. On August 14, the post commander came before us and announced, the war is over. Japan has surrendered this afternoon. There was no sleep that night. Paul Tonmolvin. The war ended and we were ready to head for USA. Another slow boat, but going the right direction, Ray Firth. Finally came the words we had longed to hear, you are going home. Oh, happy day, the fun and games were over. I really didn't think we could have stood much more. We boarded the USS Maui and set sail for home, Don Frisbee. We was to a show one night when the island, when Japan had surrendered and there was more firing going on that night than there ever was during the war. <laughs> I think it, it makes you feel more uh, closer to people. Uh, uh, some, of, some of those fellows I was with, they've all gone now, but I feel so happy uh, to have been with such a good outfit. Of the 90 soldiers who stood at attention that March day in Garland for that photograph, not one who remained a part of the original unit lost their lives during the war. For the next 60 or more years, the members of the 222nd kept in touch, meeting every year to relive the memories that few today can imagine. But one by one, they have now passed on. Today, only five of those original 90 are still living. Eldon Munns of Garland, Grant Nicholas of Fielding and Emerson Earl, now living in Twin Falls, Idaho, were three who left and came back together. Sudi Yamasaki of Karin and Wayne Knorr of Tremonton also left with the 222nd but were transferred to other outfits. The experiences these men shared during a sobering episode in this nation's history forged a brotherhood that time and the horrors of war could not penetrate.